speed. Since the dawn of humankind, we have had but one sick and twisted desire. I must go fast. Enter the world of speedrunning, aka completing video games at the most optimal breakneck speeds imaginable. A world filled with words like strat, exploit, RNG, frame perfect, and a little thing I like to call wearing pajamas outside of your home. Cutscenes? Skip! Walking normally? As if peanut butter jiff, chunky ass! Awkward silences? Were you, were you gonna say something? I, I don't know. The year is no! Just kidding, the year is 1977. <laughs> Miles per hour. Key Games releases Drag Race into the arcades, a game that had players compete for the best time in, you guessed it, a fucking drag race. 1980, Activision rips it off for the Atari and calls it Dragster. Whoa, wow, how'd you think of that name? And Dragster is commonly cited as one of the first documented cases of competitive speed run. 1982, this guy Todd Rogers claims he gets a 5.51 record time in Dragster and holds the Guinness Book of World Records record for like 30 years until people dissect the code of the game in 2018 and find out that it's literally impossible to get anything faster than a 5.57. Wait, 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 what the f So you're telling me he cheated and lied? But... But I thought people were awesome. Nope, people suck, and there's gonna be a lot more cheaters too, and also a terrible video game called The Cheetah Men and a Disney Channel called The Cheetah Girl. 1986, Metroid drops and is one of the first non-speed focused games that still incentivize speedy gamers to complete it as fast as possible by rewarding gamers, classic move, with a couple of these. <laughs> yeah, I'm a gamer. Not because I don't have a life, but because I choose to live mini. 1993, Doom drops, and Doom is the reason speedrunning exists as we know it. Doom changed everything. Because not only does Doom have guns, and ghouls, and goblins, and little gerbils with machine guns, and an in-game timer, but Doom also has a built-in replay function where you could save demo files of your gameplay called lumps, aka .lmps, to watch later in-game. Basically think like Halo 3 theater mode, but like 14 years before that, which is completely crazy. Frog. And speedrunners could share those little mountain lump files online as proof that they're not cheaters and that people are awesome. Yes! Yes! I fucking knew it! I knew they were awesome! Jesus Christ, dude. Doom is responsible for so many things. First person shooters, deathmatch multiplayer, speedrunning, uh, Fifel Goes West, an American Tale, Flushed Away, Ratatouille. 1994 Super Metroid drops, and this game is practically on its hands and knees begging you, please! Please, somebody speedrun me for the love of God! Oh, suck your- Containing a more open structure, advanced movement techniques like wall jumping, an in-game timer, some more of these, because I'm a gamer. <laughs> Not because I don't have a wife, but because I've never smelled one. 1996, Doom gives birth to a massive chunky baby named Quake, and the speedrunning community that began with Doom just continues to blossom and grow with her grotesque, massive 3D polygonal sun. 1997, no Nolan Radix creates Nightmare Speed Demos, a site dedicated to speed demos of Quake, but only on the Nightmare difficulty, hence the name Nightmare Speed Demos. In case that was difficult to understand, here's a graph I made. Later in 1997, Nolan Radix and fellow speedrunners put together Quake Done Quick, a compilation of the fastest records for each level in Quake played on the Nightmare difficulty, but uh, stitched together as if a person was playing through the whole game in one go while freebasing not. Quake Done Quick gets shared around different corners of the internet and even some PC gaming magazines, and is a lot of gamers' first exposure to the ever-growing world of not wearing a lot of deodorant. But some other gamers in the Quake community, also known as Quakers, didn't want to run on Nightmare Mode and instead wanted to run on Easy Mode and just focus on going as fast as possible. So these Quakers made their own websites. 1998, Radix merges his freaky Nightmare site with a growing Easy Mode site and bada boom, bada bing, Dobby and Gollum have entered the ring. Speed Demos Archive is born, which quickly becomes the sole hub for watching gamers go absolutely Quasi on Quake. Essentially, much like Doom, Quake is really important and is super responsible for not only the growth of online speedrunning communities, but also 3D FPS games like Half-Life, online multiplayer in esports, uh, community mods, Stuart Little, uh, Rat... 2003, anonymous speedrunner under the nickname Morimoto uploads an impeccably perfect and speedy playthrough of Super Mario Bros. 3 to the internet, and a lot of people are like, whoa, Willikers, this is f***ing crazy, I'm peeing my pants. And while this video would introduce a lot of people to the concept of speedrunning, surprise bitch, think again, cause you just got tasked. Ta
pass or tool assisted speedrun basically means that you play through the game using an emulator and by using save states and other wizardry you make it appear as if you are the Michael Jordan of Mario when in reality you're not even really the Michael Wazinki. Which is cool for seeing what's potentially possible in a game for actual speedrunners but also adds a lot of fuel to the ongoing war between uh, loser cheater bags of dog shit and people who are actually awesome and do NOS on top of cars. Also in 2003, Radix uploads his own personal speedrun of Metroid Prime to Speed Demo's archive, and after it gets a lot of traffic and attention, he says, you know what, screw it, and opens up Speed Demo's archive to speedruns of all sorts of games, not just Doom or Quake, like Ocarina of Time and GoldenEye 007 and Mario Kart 64 and Super Mario 64 and My Dad's a Dentist 64. I've wanted that game to come out for a hundred years. And there's even different categories of speedruns, like any percent runs, which basically means just getting to the end credits as quickly as possible by any means necessary, even if it means using glitches and exploits to just teleport to the end of the game in under like 20 minutes. Or a hundred percent runs, which means completing everything in the game to a hundred percent completion, which I'm sure you pieced together when I said 100%. In case that wasn't clear, here's a graph, here's another graph. You know, four hours might not be the first thing that comes to mind when I say the word speedrun, but when beating Ocarina of Time usually takes you like three years, suddenly four hours feels like you're right on the raceway to Talladega. Ow! Okay, so the year is 2007. Everyone's trying to get a Wii. Everyone's confused by the iPhone. Barack, he's given the Oval Office the stinky eye. And meanwhile on the internet, live streaming is slowly starting to rear its streamy head with sites like like Ustream and Justin TV, which would later give us Twitch TV in 2011, I don't know, maybe you've heard of it, and speedrunners are definitely taking notice. 2010, a group of speedrunners from the website speeddemoarchives.com, remember that website from earlier, well, they decided to take a hint from the speed gamers and hold a speedrunning charity marathon event of their own, and they called it Classic Games Done Quick, a reference to that Quake compilation video from earlier, Quake Done Quick, oh my god, it's like everything is connected and everyone's gonna fall in love at the end. Starting in 2011, Awesome Games Done Quick or AGDQ and its companion summer event, Summer Games Done Quick or SGDQ, uh, have been held every year since. And if you've heard of speedrunning before clicking on this obnoxious and terrible video, GDQ is probably a big reason for that. Streamed live on Twitch for a week straight, GDQ is non-stop, 24-7 speedrunning madness. I mean, if you want to see gamers go absolutely sacrilegious on some freaky, demented shit, look no further. Want to see your favorite game that took you like seven centuries to beat get farted on by a pro gamer in like 30 minutes while simultaneously explaining to you how and why? Like, Okay, so basically right here, I'm going to use the item swap glitch I talked about earlier to frame perfect teleport Cranky Kong into the final dance scene. Okay, Cranky Kong is in the final dance scenario. He's okay. He pulled out the shovel and three, two, one. Okay. He bonked the last boss on the head. That's time. All of your girlfriends are now pregnant. And uh, check your Bank of America account because it should be drained. In 2014, AGDQ raised over a million dollars for Prevent Cancer Foundation. Doubling that in 2017 and tripling that in 2020. A three million dollar fart on cancer, all because humans are sick, twisted, and goddamn it, beautiful psychos that just want to go fast. And yeah, sometimes that might involve being extremely awkward, but it also involves one very important word. Passion. While GDQ grew bigger and bigger every year since the birth of Twitch, gaining more and more viewers, speedrunning and speedrunning streamers grew along with it. And even if some people will cheat and lie and do whatever it takes to get some world record in some random game, a lot of other people actually are amazing. The borderline computer android ass level of inhuman perfection and precision required to pull some of this shit off is nothing short of astounding. It is fucking poetry moving at 60 frames per second and maybe also sometimes 9 frames per second if it's golden eye. Speedrunning, in a lot of ways, reminds me of skateboarding. And not just because I'm dog shit at both of them. It's because both hobbies require that you fail at the same thing over and over and over and over again before you can even get a tiny bit close to achieving your goal. Both hobbies require intense mindfulness and focus and control over what your body is physically capable of doing. Both hobbies have a strong sense of community where you can feel that your peers 
peers just want you to succeed and push yourself and break new ground. And they both make people act like tiny little babies and have little pissy fits. <laughs> Although I am neither a professional gamer that works at GameStop or a professional skateboarder that works at GameStop, I greatly admire those that are employed by their local GameStop because it is an absolute gift to be able to witness what they are capable of achieving while freebasing NOS. The current state of speedrunning fucking rules, at least coming from an avid fan and dumbass viewer. Because nowadays, there seems to be a speedrunning community for any game imaginable. Speedrunning has become so commonplace that even IGN is getting in on the action with their Devs React to Speedrun series, which is the best idea they've had since the 9 out of 10 review score. Whether it's a AAA game, indie game, Game Boy game, Flash game, Wikipedia page, people are probably speedrunning it. And if you've ever played a video game, you should definitely check out a speed run, because going fast is pretty ass crazy. That's all I got. Um, if you want more speed running content in your life, shout out Summoning Salt, shout out Carl Jost, uh, shout out running really fast at a door in real life. Now please stay tuned for a word from today's sponsor. <laughs> Just kidding, it's me. I'm today's sponsor. If you're watching this video, then that means my album comes out very soon. Uh, I worked very hard on those songs. Some of them have even been in the oven since before I had a YouTube channel, and I really hope you like them. That being said, if they're not good, bully me. And if they are good, bully me too, because I'm just just a sick little bitch like that. Anyways, uh, per usual, thanks for giving even the tiniest bit of shit about me. I uh, appreciate you watching this video, checking, checking me out. <laughs> also, everyone say thanks to my girlfriend, Claire, for letting me record this video in her apartment. Thanks, Claire. What'd you say? Oh, you were the speediest, you were Sonic the whole time. Hi from my Ibiza. The sun is really nice right now. Oh my God, it's so bright. Oh my God, someone's <laughs> oh my god, Ibiza's crazy this time of year. 